Yo, 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 everyone. It is Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. And in this video, I'm going to review the day trades that I took um, on my Apex evaluation account. Um, I was trading two other accounts. I was trading a top step evaluation account that um, I, I hit my profit limit on pretty quickly today, so I'm not going to review that. It was a very similar ES trade. Um, and then on my TradeStation cash account, um, yeah, I basically took the same trades. So just need to review this. Um, coming into, well, let me start with this. As you know, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I trade the ICT silver model setup. And during the New York session, there are two um, hour long time frames, and that's from 10 a.m. New York local time to 11 a.m. New York local time, and 1400 New York local time to 1500 New York local time. So during these two hour time frames, what ICT or Michael Huddleston teaches is that um, trading algorithms are going to converge aggressively on a prior inefficiency or an inefficiency that is created from a displacement during the setup hour. So coming into our uh, AM session here on ES, um, I outlined this inefficiency um, that I'm highlighting with the cursor. So I'm highlighting this volume imbalance. Now, what makes this an inefficiency is the gap between the close of the first candle and the open of the second candle. And as price was coming down south, um, I was looking at this inefficiency and waiting to see if if the trading algorithms, if price was coming down to it in the time frame that I was looking for. And so uh, it did do that. And my executions were not ideal. Um, as you can see, I was scaling into a position all around the inefficiency. Um, I didn't quite, uh, I didn't quite get there, you know, um, exactly. I was kind of scaling in all around it. I ended up having five contracts on, and um, as price went and targeted this nearest liquidity here above 44.18 spot 85, I took the first four contracts off. So that was our nearest liquidity. So. Second part of the ICT silver model setup or the silver bullet setup is that after after price converges or trading algorithms converge on an inefficiency, they should expand or go target liquidity. So basically you, you enter on the inefficiency during this time frame and then you aim for liquidity. So I scaled into some longs here. Um, I, I think I did get a couple like right in the inefficiency, right in that separation. And you can see that price came down three times and, and respected it just to the letter, right? There's no way that this can be random. There's no way that I could pick the exact time that this happened using this exact level. Using, I mean, there's guys, there's, this is way beyond randomness, right? Obviously, there are trading algorithms or an algorithm that's controlling the market. But, but if you've watched my channel, you already know that to be the case. The market. The market is automated. So anyways, a um, couple of my entries were suboptimal. Um, I had my stop loss around like 44.03, just a little bit below the inefficiency in case it wanted to um, uh, sweep lower without running it lower. And then as we came into New York lunch, um, the New York lunch macro that Michael, Huddles Michael teaches is Basically, uh, what price did here, which is that during the New York lunch hour from 1200 to 1300 New York local time, a macro, not, a, not the algorithm, but just a short set of instructions will target the nearest liquidity. So I knew that the New York lunch hour was coming up, and so I didn't want to hold on to the trade past the New York local, New York lunch hour. I didn't, so I didn't. Uh, I closed the first four contracts at 11:42, and then I, I let the second, the the last contract go a little bit into New York lunch. But as I could see that price, you know, didn't appear like it wanted to to go target higher liquidity immediately. I just closed out the whole position. Um, did not trade the ES uh, during the PM silver bullet setup, although you can see um, that we did converge on an inefficiency, and now we're targeting liquidity as we come into the cash close. Um, what else did I trade on my Apex account today? Um, I tried to trade the 30-year bond. So the 30-year bond um, came up 
uh, during the setup hour. Now bonds are a little bit different. Not I mean not really, but the they close like their cash market close early. I don't know. They don't like the PM. The PM silver bullet model doesn't work so well with doesn't. Okay, I shouldn't say it doesn't work well. It works fine, but it, it doesn't have as dramatic a move in the PM session. It's not gonna hasn't re delivered me the results that I want to see that the index PM session does. So I was looking at the 30 year bond and I was calling this an inefficiency right here. And I could see that the trading algorithms were converging on it. And I was trying to get short um, right around 128 spot 08. Now the bonds are measured in 30 seconds. So the candles look a little bit different. Um, and honestly, this trade, I took scratches on them, small losses, but um, Honestly, I probably just could have held on to them and broke even. I decided not to. I decided to take the risk off. So I tried to trade the 30-year bond during the setup hour. Uh, unfortunately, didn't have the movement back down the liquidity that I wanted to see. Um, it'll probably end up going down uh, tomorrow. Um, okay, big trade today during the PM session, and we need to spend a little bit of time with this. So this was my Russell 2000 trade. So, um, all right, let's talk about what happened here. So let's go up to a 10 minute time frame, and let's take the executions off. So we know that during the setup hour or sometimes even like I would say to paint outside the lines, just a slightly outside of the setup hour, sometimes slightly outside. But during the setup hour, especially with the stock indices, it's pretty exact. During the setup hour, um, the, pro, uh, the trading algorithms are going to converge like a school of piranha. Um, that's kind of how I see it happening. It's like a school of piranha. They're going to converge on an inefficiency. They're going to converge on uh, volume imbalance, gap, liquidity void, fair value gap. They're going to converge on an inefficiency during the setup hour. And so Russell 2000, I initially, okay, here's what I was initially thinking. I initially thought that, um, I got to try and find it. I initially thought that the inefficiency was right at, around here at 1888 spot four. Okay. That's where I initially thought the inefficiency was. And as price continued to trade higher, I was like, did I miss something? Did I, like, price is obviously converging on an inefficiency. Um, but I, I can't identify which one. Well, what it ended up doing, and why I, why I ended up scaling into the trade, is there it was right there. Okay, there was your inefficiency for your PM silver bullet. So when I looked higher on price up here at around 1891, not only did I see a fair value gap, but I identified an order block. I then took the order block. Now the, C, the, the PM silver bullet doesn't necessarily involve order blocks, but you you know oftentimes you're going to see order blocks paired with the inefficiency so with this in mind that's why I have this fib drawn out so the vertical lines on my chart are and let me make the chart bigger the vertical lines on my chart are my four setup times okay we were going into 1400 to 1500 New York local time okay so that's our PM silver model time frame so that's why I was looking for price to come into an inefficiency during that time frame. Now, why is the FIB here? The FIB is drawing out Michael's order block into quarters. Okay, so here I've taken it, um, I took it from the 30 minute time frame, this green candle right here, and I pulled it from high to low and that took it into quarters. Okay, so now we have that in mind. So, as you can see, I initially got in my first six contracts thinking that the inefficiency that price was, was going towards um, was around 1888. As I saw that I had, obviously I had chosen the wrong inefficiency, the inefficiency was higher. When I identified this order block and inefficiency that we had on the left, uh, that's when I, I decided to close out my bond trade and start limiting my risk and I was going to start scaling into a short position. So as we come up to the order block, you can see, what do we see here on the one minute time frame? Most of these closes, okay, are 
respecting the 50% of that order block or if they're closing above, they're barely closing above. None of the candles wick up to, trade up to, or close above the 75% retracement of that order block. As I saw that there was this big black displacement candle down, there was another order block here on the one minute time frame that I'm highlighting with my cursor. So although I am trading the silver bullet model, I'm aware of Michael's other models and I'm aware uh, I'm seeing them happen, right? So I'm using his order block during the setup time. I'm using displacement and the same order block during the setup time. So at this point, once price came up and I started, I saw this big displacement candle right here that I'm highlighting with my cursor on a one minute time frame. That's when I had a very strong idea that this move higher was a, was indeed a silver bullet. It was converging on it was converging on an inefficiency and then we should go seek liquidity. So I started scaling into more shorts to bring my cost average higher. Now uh, I had a lot of contracts on at this point. I had like 14 contracts on like way too much risk, right? So with that in mind, you can see that I started to scale out um, as we came down. So I took off the first six contracts on the way down. Now the reason why I took off five contracts here at 1885 spot two is because this was the first down candle, okay? The first down candle of this move to the buy side, okay? It's the first down candle to the move to the buy side. So I knew that the trading algorithms were going to switch from converging on an inefficiency to seeking liquidity. And I had to think to myself at that point, well, okay, I know that they're going to switch from converging on, on an inefficiency to finding liquidity. So if you were trailing a stop loss higher, right, if the market is at this point, or if it's going to switch from converging to finding, finding liquidity, where would that first pool of liquidity be? So I took the first black candle here, all right, on the way down, and I used that as my primary target where I took off the bulk of my contracts. I took off half of them on the way down. I took off another five as we hit this first order block. Now you can see that obviously I'm, I left some money on the table, right? Like price is still trading down, but I'm totally cool with that, y'all. I made thousands of dollars, fake dollars, fake dollars, evaluation account, fake dollars. Um, Anyways, the last contract here, I took off right here where my cursor is because I didn't know if Price maybe wanted to use this wick here as an inefficiency and maybe bounce. Obviously it didn't, and we can see that I did leave some money on the table. So this was not a perfect trade, but I did make money. Um, as you can see now, the Russell 2000 is coming in aggressively seeking liquidity. All, it might come all the way back down to 1877. I'm not going to lie to you. It might trade all the way back down to this low. It's possible. Okay. I don't want to say that it's impossible. But I'm out of my position and I'm not getting back in it. Right. I only trade during these setup times. So I'm pleased with this trade. My exits were not perfect, but they were pretty good. And um, that is all the trades that I took today um, during the New York session. So we took some AM trades on the ES and we took uh, PM trades on the Russell 2000 and I took a, a scratch or a small loss on the 30 year bond. I hope you enjoyed this recap. Um, my um, Apex Trader referral links and my Top Step Refer Friend are in the description box below if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed this recap. Please make sure to like, comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. I upload frequently, so if you like frequent uploads, that's what I do. Okay, bye-bye.